Hey coaches, super excited about this training here on Instagram Stories. And you guys all know that the social media landscape is constantly evolving. It's very, very dynamic. But an area where a lot of coaches have seen more and more success attracting people, connecting with people, engaging with them, and even inviting has been through Instagram Stories. So what I did is I asked Jatana Jackson, a phenomenal coach who does really, really well with Instagram Stories, to kind of walk through what she does, some of her best practices in using Instagram Stories in a training format that we could use here. So here's what I want you to do with this. I want you to pay attention to what Jatana talks to you about. Look at some of her best practices. Look at how she does uh, things with Instagram Stories. And, and maybe if you were just getting started or if you haven't really done a lot with Instagram Stories, there might be a tendency to feel a little bit overwhelmed with that. But I want you to stop at that point, if that's you, and just look, okay, so what are some, some things that I learned, some best practices that I learned that I can put in place right now to get better at Instagram stories? And then know that you'll evolve and keep getting better and better at these as you go on. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch the video. I want you to identify a couple best practices, things that you can put in place to make sure Instagram and Instagram stories more compelling and helping connecting and, and engaging with people that leads to inviting opportunities for yourself. And then I want you to get after it. Number three, get after it and just start doing it. Don't overthink it. Just get after it and start doing it. I know, I know you're going to see some great results. So enjoy this training from Chan Jackson, everybody. I am excited to share with you guys some of awesome here we go. Some awesome tools that I've been using for Instagram to really grow my warm market, to tap into my cold market, and um, really draw people into my life and inspire them by my daily activities. And so I was asked by Kim to share some awesome information that has been helping me. Here are some things that I'm going to cover in this. Um, we are going to talk about how to make your page fly for business. Um, helpful tools to make your Instagram stories sexy, and I don't mean sexy as the way you would normally think it. I mean just a way that is attractive, a way that makes people want to come back and watch you on a daily basis. I'm going to give you some of my secrets to Insta stories. There are definitely little tricks and tips that you can do to um, help you get more eyes on your stories and to also get people coming back to you on a regular basis. And then, of course, curiosity marketing, which is where it's at. I mean, Shaleen talked about it at Summit, and it is definitely the way to present the consumable products that we have and also your health and fitness journey. And then I'm going to show you a sample of a marketing plan that I used um, probably two weeks ago. I don't know when you're watching this video, but a little bit ago. And um, this has allowed me to really duplicate myself with my team. I can give this marketing plan to my coaches, to any coach at any level, and they know exactly how to present themselves on Insta Stories and what content they should be talking about that particular day. So that way when they go to do their call to action or what we call our right hook, it all makes sense to their audience. And so having a marketing plan is key. Then I'm going to show you how I do a call to action, which is your right hook, and going into finalizing it with creating FOMO, which Insta Stories is baller at. Um, is definitely, if you don't know what FOMO is, a fear of missing out. And you can really create that tension on Insta Stories. So let's dive right in. Let's talk about making our business, our um, pages fly for the business. So there are two samples here. You have my Instagram page, and then you have uh, one of the coaches on my team, Kelly King Fit. Now, on mine, you can tell that mine is a business page. Hers is a personal page. I would highly encourage you guys to transition to a business page. And the reason why is it gives you so many helpful um, insights to who your following is and what they like. So if you see the little bars in the top of my Jatana Jackson's, um, right next to my name, that is insights that tells you, you know, is it males or females, what demographics, what cities are watching your stories, which is huge when it comes to tagging locations. And then also down below, you can, you can see that you can promote, right? You can do ads on Instagram and on the personal page you cannot. And this is just tied to your Facebook like page. Now, there is a little trick for putting the list of descriptions of you. You cannot directly post this into the bio on Instagram. You have to go into your phone's notepad Type it out and list it out exactly what you want it to say with the emojis or no emojis. I've seen, you know, some people put little plus signs as markers, but 
type it out on your notepad and then you can copy and paste it over to your bio. So this is a great way to make sure your page is set up when people come to you and they look at your page, they can decide, I kind of like these things about this chick and I want to follow her or she's not really my jam. So make sure you have it all listed out. And I say definitely narrow it down to things that kind of define you. So for me, I market a lot to pageant girls. So I definitely put Mrs. Virginia 2015 on there because pageant girls need health and fitness, right? Um, I'm a motivator, so they're going to get a lot of motivation from my page. I'm a beach lover. I'm a mom with muscles. Notice I didn't put, um, you know, beach body coach on that part of it. I'm donut and cupcake obsessed, so I kind of sprinkle that in there that I'm real and normal, and I also struggle with sugar. Um, and then I'm a makeup lover. Those are some some values. That, or those are that's value that they're going to get from my page. Um, and then I added on there just recently UK beach body coach mentor because I was getting some traffic from the UK. And I wanted them to know that I was here to mentor them if they were interested in becoming a Beachbody coach. All right. So here's a great way, and I can't for the life of me remember the coach that came up with this. It was in Carl's group last summer, and um, she created this really cool setup that was really helpful, especially if you don't have the swipe up options in your Insta story. So this is a final system that is with this website here. It's a very strange link, um, linktr.ee. And with this link, you can put it on in your bio. It is a free app. And when your followers click on that link, this is what they see, the purple screen here where it says, um, I, right now I have designated three buttons. It says United uh, United Kingdom Beachbody is coming in 2017. Chat with me or connect with me on Facebook. And with those links, I've connected Wufu Forms. Um, and so I can funnel people through that are interested in from the UK. I can funnel people through who are interested in just chatting with me about health and fitness. And then, of course, people can connect with me on Facebook as well. So it's a simplified way to, one, track people, and two, have people fill out this information so that you can get them enrolled as a coach or into a challenge group. Um, and this is also a way in your Insta stories to say, go to the link on my bio, click the link on my bio to fill out the application to join my group. All right, moving on. All right, let's talk about my favorite part. This is <laughs> how to really make it, hey, make your Insta story sexy. And what I mean, like I said, what I mean by sexy is how to really get some grit on it where people want to watch you, where people are continuously coming back. It's kind of fun because I get messages in my inbox and they're like, girl, I get up in the morning, I get my coffee, and I watch your story. And like I've become the morning paper. That's awesome. That's what I want them to do because I want to inspire them to take action. And I'm going to show you how you can inspire them to take action on the things that you want them to take action on. Um, so here's a few tools that I use, some of my top tools. Obviously, Word Swag is fantastic. We've been using it on Facebook for a while uh, to really glam up our, our pictures and stuff. But you can use it in Instagram stories as well. Because when you go to Word Swag, it's an app. Um, there is, when you crop the picture in the very beginning, there is an Insta story um, crop. So it crops it directly in there so that it fits perfectly into your Insta story. There's preloaded quotes in there, there's fantastic graphics. So as you can see the black and white picture there, instead of just using the standard font that can't, comes with Insta stories, I use the word swag, and that allowed me to kind of give it a little different flair and it looks more professional. Uh, another thing that I get asked a lot of questions on is what filters do I use? Um, I definitely utilize the Instagram filters because they're fun also, but I think kind of making my stuff stand out and making it so engaging to the eye that they want to keep watching. You guys, you have like three seconds, maybe less, to capture somebody's attention, and it's got to be something that really makes it pop where they want to keep watching, and so using filters that are going to really keep the eye captivated is super important. So I use Snapseed, and that's the picture of me holding my hair. Um, that is Snapseed, and it's the drama filter, which is my favorite. Helps your abs pop, too. But um, it's just a really cool filter, and like I said, it captivates the eye. 
Now, the new like trend that I, <laughs> honestly I found out from my hairdresser, which is hilarious, but um, is Hype Type. Hype Type is a free app. I actually purchased the one that does not have the watermark on it because I think it's cheesy to have a watermark on all my pictures or all my videos. So I bought, I think it was like $2.99, don't quote me on that, but it's a fantastic app. You can add uh, unlimited music, um, fonts are in there, all kinds of really fun fonts, and then you can have speed control on your music and your videos. So what I will do is I'll record, say if you wanted to record your favorite booty move with the bands, right? You want your audience to see this really cool move that you learn and you really feel the effects of it. You press the three second timer on your phone, on Insta Stories, go into place, record it, save it to your camera roll, and then go into Hype Type. Put it into Hype Type and that's where you doctor it up. So I put favorite booty move using the different font options that are there. Um, I added music to it. It was probably some booty song, because by the way, the music that is in there is so diverse. I can type booty in there. I could type ocean sounds. I could type the word shake, and all the songs with the word shake would come up, or all the songs with the word booty would come up. Um, so there's country, classical, um, sound, uh, ocean sounds, Christian music, everything is already preloaded in there and you don't need to go into your iTunes from your phone, which is really nice. Um, so here's another example of how I shared using Hype Type. I think I had nothing but a gangster party, whatever that rap, rap song is, and I had my, um, my Energize, and I do this on a daily basis and I never ever, and I'm gonna share this with you in a minute, but I never name drop um, the products because I want people to come to me and ask. And then the, another graphic that I did there with Hype Type is the um, pop-up font that said Mommy's, Mommy Sexy Shake or Mama Sexy Shake Time, and it pops up, and I'm drinking a shake, and there's a fun song in the background. It just really entertains my audience, and it makes them want to come back, and it also makes them want to keep watching the story and not swipe away. All right, here's a few little secrets with my Insta stories that I have found to be super helpful. Um, things to consider, this is gonna kinda go back to posting on actual Instagram, and it's also become a thing on Insta stories just recently, but hashtags. Hashtags are huge with Instagram, so you wanna make sure you have a good source of hashtags that you are using, and maybe even have 10 and then four sets of 10 in your phone so that all you have to do is copy and paste. Whenever you create a post, you grab your group of hashtags and you put them into that post. And you can also hashtag on your Insta story, which people can follow certain hashtags. It's pretty cool. Also, tagging your location. You guys, this right here is like the money maker. This is amazing. Um, <laughs> so for example, I actually went out line dancing in Centerville, Virginia, and I had tagged Centerville, Virginia, and I think I was probably talking in some video in Insta Stories my house, going line dancing, look at my boots, everything's cute, cool. Maybe even took a selfie with my boots on, I don't know. But I tagged Centerville, Virginia, and I got this message in my inbox probably like two weeks later, and it's this girl, and she messages me, and she says, hey girl, I saw your story when you were in Centerville, Virginia. I was just following the stories for Centerville. And I just moved here, and I don't want to sound like a creeper, but I just moved here, and um, I'm a military wife. I don't know anybody, and I've been following you, and I promise you I'm not a creeper, but I've been following you, and I love what you're doing, and I'm interested in maybe getting healthy, and I don't know where to start. I'm like, are you kidding me? Just because I tagged. This, the place, the city that I was going to, to go line dancing, this girl was able to follow my stories for two weeks and decided to reach out to me. So tagging your location is awesome. By the way, you can tag any location. You don't have to be there. I am finding a huge following in Toronto, which is crazy. So I just play around with the different locations and make sure I'm always tagging every single Insta story. A little trick with that though, is you can tag the location, then you tap it, and it becomes very translucent. Make it itty bitty, and then move it down to the corner, and it doesn't mess up the pretty graphics that you put into your story, but it still tags that location.
Also, one of the things that you want to shoot for as a coach is definitely getting up to 10,000 followers because once you achieve 10,000 followers, you get to swipe up, which is a very easy funnel system to drive people to your challenge groups or to an application um, or to joining a coach opportunity call. So 10,000 followers to get the swipe up option in Insta Stories. Another question that I get a lot is how do you pin emojis onto an Insta story? You guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I love music and I'm always singing either in my Jeep or with my pre-workout or whatever, but I like to pin microphones and all kinds of things. And actually, you can now do um, GIFs on there. Is that how you say it, G-I-F? You can do those on your Insta stories as well. But if you wanted to pin an emoji, basically all you do is hold your finger on the actual emoji that you've chosen, and it will this little bottom piece will come up, and you just click pin. But while you're holding your finger, you can make it bigger, smaller. You can move it around. You can pin it to your chin if it's a microphone, and that way when you're singing or whatever you're doing, um, it will stay in place to your face. So just a really fun way to keep it exciting, keep their attention, make them want to continue watching you, and also come back to watching you. Now, another new feature that has become the new trend, and here's some examples here, and actually mine's not even finished yet, but um, showing your highlights. Before, Insta Stories were 24 hours. Now, you can pick certain stories that you want to highlight. And so here are three coach examples on, on Instagram where they have different parts of their journey that they want to share. So as you can see, Afton Rio has her inspo, art life, her faves, like her favorite products, and then mom life. And Kelsey King here has mama life, inspo, Florida life, coach life. Kelly King here has fitness, mom, boss, balance, and mom life. You can go check out their pages and see what they posted in there. But it's a great way to give your audience the little pieces uh, or categories of you that you like to share on a daily basis. And it's also a great way to save your call to action. So if I am doing a call to action to an AV obsession group, I will put it in my highlights so that it stays there so I can execute it on my stories. It's gone after 24 hours, but then I can create a highlight where it is always there. So even if somebody come were, were to come to me and ask a question, I can say, go check out my highlight. I have all the details listed in there. And then when it says swipe up, go ahead and join the group or fill out the application or go to the link in my bio. So that is a new fun feature and it's a great way to really organize pieces that you want people to come back and see again. All right, so here is some curiosity marketing um, do's and then I'll go over some don'ts. Um, Share your, share your journey, of course. You want to share your health and fitness journey, and I'm going to show you how you can properly do it here in a bit. Stay on topic. Pick five major themes. Don't go too crazy. Like, if I started telling you guys about how to crochet, you'd probably like, really, Jatana? Like, I do not follow you to watch you knit. Like, that's not cool. That's not, not that knitting's not cool. But, I, but my followers don't follow me for that, so I try to stay within the major themes. Have fun, be creative, definitely do call to actions, be super, super consistent. Because I want my, my chicks, they get up in the morning and make their coffee and come to my Insta stories to know that I'm going to be there when they go to check it out. Um, and then learn new features, you guys. You have to follow Instagram's actual Insta story because they show you all of the new features. And then the small pieces of your day. Make sure you just show, sample small pieces of your day so that you're constantly up in the top row of their Insta stories. So here's two graphics that I did here, and I was trying to um, breadcrumb working out and drinking some healthy shake that I don't like to say the names of. Um, because if you look at the picture here, and you're going to see my don'ts and see the difference, but if you look at the picture here, I'm saying about that workout, I look like I have... Uh, plastic plates on my face and some weird bands around my ankles. It makes no sense, but I've worked out with something and it's kicked my butt. And obviously I've proven health and fitness with my, the results in my body. And so it's intriguing. I also use the filters, which makes it pop a little more. The picture over here with James, my son, I put he approves his message, superfoods down, hashtag mom life. It's basically showing life, life that they can relate to, but I'm also breadcrumbing this awesome shake that I get to drink. 
All right. So let's go over some don'ts. <laughs> um, some don'ts. Post product names. Honestly, I feel like that is salesy. I feel like people are, when they watch it, they're thinking, you know what? She's just trying to take my money. She's just trying to sell something to me, and they're not going to come back and watch you, and they might even be turned off by it. So I try really hard not to post product names. Um, getting too off topic, poor sticker placement, and talking forever. And what do I mean by talking forever? You guys, I have a rule of thumb. I don't go past three stories like 15 second segments of talking because after that it becomes annoying <laughs> it becomes where the person's like tap 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 oh my gosh she's still talking oh my gosh okay swipe away you don't want them to swipe away you want them to stay engaged so if you're going to talk about something let's get to the point and stay within um, less than three stories so here's an example of some really bad Insta stories. These are some that I created for fun <laughs> to show you guys. But um, I'm putting something like T25 done. All I'm doing is having them go, okay, I don't know what that means. Cool. Or they're going to go, what's T25? Let me go look it up. And then they might be directed to Amazon or something like that. So I want them to come to me and I want them to ask me questions. And things like this is not going to get them to come to me. Um, let's talk about the animal filters, you guys. I get it. When we don't do our makeup, we look super cute as bunnies. I totally get it. And there are times when it's hilarious to use an animal filter, like if you're holding a baby and the baby's got bunny ears too. But in general, it's kind of awkward. To me, maybe that's just my opinion, but I think that a lot of people hide behind them and then they get the like high-pitched voice. It's just strange. And so try to stay away from the filters unless you're using them to be funny or unless you're using them you know, you're video recording your mom making something in the kitchen and she's got bunny ears on and she doesn't know it. Like, that's funny. But use them properly. Um, and then here I am holding a bag of Shakeology. Like I said, somebody's just going to Google it. They're not going to come to me and ask me, hey, what is that sexy mama shake you keep drinking every morning? Wow. I'm so glad you asked. Do you drink shakes? Oh, you do. You juice. That's really cool. How do you like it? Like, have you found it to be helpful for your health and fitness journey? Or is it helping you feel more energetic? Like, it turns the conversation, turns into a conversation back and forth rather than them already knowing exactly what I'm using. And then, of course, the lighting is a little off on this as well. So be, be conscious of the lighting. Go to a window, um, use a lamp or a diva light, which is what I have. And then I also have a Joby with little lights attached to it as well, just a tripod. All right, <clears throat> so let's go over, and I'm going kind of fast, so hopefully you guys are catching all this. You can always watch the recording if this is not making sense and it's going too fast. But here is my marketing plan for uh, previous week. I like to make sure that I am emphasizing one particular thing every single day. And this is super duplicatable because I can tell a brand new coach today on your Facebook page, on your Instagram wall, and in your Insta stories, I want you to really hit home energize. Like, what does energize do for you? I want you to think about how energize has affected your workouts, how it's made you feel, and then maybe what you felt before you ever started taking it. What was it like to work out before you had energize? And so, painting that picture for them the day before and then having that, giving them an example of what that would look like and then executing it the next day team wide is huge. And so I do this very specifically every single day and it's very repeatable on a monthly basis or even a weekly basis. So here's some examples of how to do that. How to effectively share products and Insta stories. Um, I like to name my products. I brand Energize and Shakeology for me, what it is for me. And I think that that relates more to my audience than if I were to just say, this is my pre-workout or this is my meal replacement Shakeology. So I've called it, and some people are weirded out by it, hashtag mom crack, because that's what it is for me. Like I'm a crazy busy mom, I've got little ones, I've got a busy life, and this gives me the insane energy that I need to accomplish one of the hardest things it is to accomplish as a mom that's working out. So how to effectively share in Insta stories. The story one, 
let me set the scene for you. It's 5.48 a.m. and I am butt tired, okay? I do not feel like working out. It's dark in my house and I have lowered my voice because I want them to feel the effect of what Energize does for me and I'm being super intentional in this story. Hey guys, good morning, Hannah. I'm up, my team's getting ready to work out, so I'm gonna head downstairs and I'm gonna get my workout in. Story number two. I specifically turned my container around because I want people to ask me what it is. I want to engage in a conversation with them about that little black container. So I have it turned around where you can't see it, and I basically am like, all right, I'm putting my mom crack in, I'm ready to like go, but I gotta get this in me so that I can really get the best workout possible in my limited amount of time that I have in my day. Right, and then the next story, I use, I use um, height type, and I probably got like Usher playing, and I've got time to slay words going across the screen. I'm dancing around like a crazy fool. What does that do? It progresses a story that lets my audience kind of feel exactly the effects of Energize. They're going from like sleep, they're probably laying in bed watching this, if we're being honest, at, five, at six o'clock in the morning, and here I am, sleepy to like, cohesive, but I'm putting it together to totally full of energy. And while even at six o'clock, I might not have been completely full of energy, it definitely gave them the impression that they needed to know that Energize will do for them, right? And like I said, I branded it Mom Crack. You can brand it um, whatever you want, you know, <laughs> I don't know what people want a lightning juice or golden juice or I've heard all kinds of crazy things, but come up with a name for you because I think that that keeps the sales piece out of it and it intrigues them. It makes them curious what is in that little black container that she uses every morning that makes her dance around like a crazy person. Um, and that has been fantastic for my business. All right, so let me show you another example of how to effectively share on Insta Stories. Let's talk about accountability, which is a piece of our coaching, a big piece of our coaching, and I even have a typo in here with my accounting group is resting, <laughs> and that's okay. It was only, what, five seconds long, probably 11 seconds. So the very first story is, it's 5.43 a.m. My alarm is going off in the actual video. It's going beep, 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 beep. And I put 54321, get up, my typo. Accountability group is rising, hashtag FOMO. And then the next story is after my workout, I prop my phone up, I had good lighting, I put a cool filter on it, it's, uh, it's engaging with colors, um, and then I put 911 mom down witness accountability group. And all I did was grab a picture of my accountability group, I actually did this after the fact, and put it on my laptop so there were some faces on there. And then the next one is a picture of the group of ladies who joined me in doing the workout. And so this shows and highlights to my followers that I have accountability. And I don't know about you guys, but as a tired, depressed, stay-at-home mom five years ago, if I were to be seeing this, I would be like, oh my goodness, what is this I need in on this? Because I can't get my workouts in, my workouts in on my own like desire and motivation. This would definitely be a perk. This would help me on my fitness journey. And so this is a way to be able to share accountability. So the first thing that I do for a call to action is I create curiosity. I talk about how I've got a big announcement coming up and I could go into a whole new school on the naming the challenge group, coming up with a concept and making sure that you're breadcrumbing that leading up to this big announcement. But we're just gonna go with the call to action right now. So you create curiosity telling them that you have a call, you have a big announcement coming at 8 a.m. And promptly at 8 a.m., I post in my stories. With this picture here, I actually just finished working out. I tossed on a cute sweater. I put a cool light on me, stood behind a, or in front of a white wall and pointed to a blank white wall. I used the word swag, right, to make it look pretty and pop. Swiped over in Insta Stories to get a black and white filter because I thought it looked a little bit more professional and then um, put that in my story. So I went with a group theme, 80 day new year group, Slay 2018. The next slide was what were they gonna get? They're gonna get fitness, nutrition, accountability, and a coach. You can even do this in a speaking story where you tell them what they're gonna get and list it out in the actual story. The next 
you're going to show them how they're going to take action. For me, because of my following, I'm able to do a swipe up and it brought them directly to my Wufu form. For you, if you don't have 10,000 followers, you can say join uh, or go to the link in my bio to be able to join the group, to fill out the application to join my group, or DM me, whatever you want to do, but have them take action. And then I gave a prize for joining. I created these little 80 sleigh mugs. Um, and I had Mariah carry all I want for Christmas. I gave 12 mugs. I give a different mug away every day for 12 days. And so they had incentive for joining um, or for buying a challenge pack. Not every person won, but each day gave away a mug. And then the last one, I wrapped it up with another call to action of swipe up to join. I use this by using word swag also. It looks pretty. It fits perfectly in there because they have an Instagram um, crop. So this is how I do my call to action. And you guys, that that is actually a, a well thought out call to action, a right hook. But I very, um, what's the word? Very simply or, or discreetly, that's the word. I very discreetly do call to actions daily. People don't always know that I'm asking for it, but it's happening on a daily basis also. But this is a hard one. This is where I'm doing the right hook, I've set it up, and now I'm spiking the ball. All right, then we've got some hashtag FOMO that happens. So what I do is I create a list, starting with, you know, it could be somebody that came from Facebook, I don't know. My first two people that wanted to join or were interested in joining, I put two spots taken already, I put their names on there, they get excited about seeing their name, honestly. And then any type of um, excitement that I get in my inbox or even questions, um, hesitations, objections, I post those publicly. You can cover their name by putting a uh, font over their actual Instagram name. Actually didn't even put an emoji over their picture. You can put an emoji over their picture, really play it safe. But saying Katie is ready, she's excited, she's in, and they're saying, it's showing my audience exactly the excitement that I'm getting in my inbox. And then I'm saying six spots left and it's filling up. People are feeling like the tension is rising and they're missing out and they don't want to miss out on this opportunity. So I make sure I'm super consistent on this. I don't just let it flop. I continue, and for me, personally, I want to fill those 10 spots within the 48 hours that, that I uh, executed this call to action. And so for me, that those list of 10 people are sitting there right in front of me on a piece of paper on my desk. And I will not, <laughs> I won't stop until I fill those 10 spots. And so it is continually showing up in my Insta stories and people are continuing to ask questions. You guys, if somebody gives you an objection in your inbox, like say they object to coaching opportunity and they're like, I just don't have a big social media following. I don't know how to do social media. So I don't know if I'd be a good coach. Screenshot that, right? Cover their picture, cover their name with words and say, I've got you girl, cover it. Next story should be, hey, I know you guys saw her hesitation on joining coaching because of social media. Well, guess what? I am going to teach you social media. You don't have to stress about that. What I need you to come to the table with is a heart and a passion for helping people and being accountable to your own health and fitness journey. What that does is it handles that objection publicly. So if there's anybody that wasn't willing to, um, to address it with you, they get to see it. And then, of course, I love your challenge groups. Like, I'm edifying my groups and my ability to coach. You can also do a right hook on your page, screenshot it, cover it with emoji, and pull your followers from your stories over to your page to read a nice, long, well-thought-out post. And then, lastly, you know what? Just don't be vanilla. Make it, get some intention behind your stories. Use some of the tools that I gave you today, and then be you. Be super intentional, be creative, and have fun. And most importantly, make sure you're being follow-worthy because that is what's going to keep people's attention and keep them coming back to you so that they are inspired by your journey. I hope that helped you guys. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.